all rats, and I'm giving a simul, but so far only one person has shown up. I had a no-show, and I'm just left the challenges open. So if it comes down to I play one game, I play one game. We will see what happens. I've put an offer for people to contact me for a game. And if they tell me, they'll get a game. So basically, uh, I play the King's Indian attack as white. And against whatever setup they employ, trying to teach a simple opening to everybody. Um, I want to give people a chance to, to play me. If they don't show up, they don't get a game. So we'll see what happens. Um, generally with this opening, white plays the first four to six moves, seven moves, the same slight variations depending on the setup that black employs. Um, but anyway, it doesn't look like anybody's interested in playing me, so it's just it's not a simul, it's one game. But anyway, if that's what we get, that's what we get. Uh, I'm not going to put a last call on it. So it might just be a video of one game. Maybe that's all I'm going to play is one game. Uh, but I was obligated to play it. He was able to play, and I'm not going to cancel it just because I have one board. Hopefully we get another one here. Okay, wait. Somebody's sending me a contact. What do they want? Okay, well. Okay, so let's see. Let's follow the same system. Last call for uh, Simul at 45.45. Tell me if you want... What is this doing? If you want a board. This console is used for system... What, what do you mean it's taking it away? Putting out a last call now. Hang on, you may get aboard. Now, why didn't it take it? Last call for simul against me at 4545. Tell me if you want in. Okay. This is this console is used for system as like challenge events. If you want to chat, I'm in a chat room. Oh wait, I'm not in the chat room. Okay, I was not in the chat room. Hang on. Uh, okay, I don't care if my clock's ticking here. Well, I can run over and make a move. Okay, you know I announced this. Got two people to sign up. One is no-showed. I've got another guy standing by. Okay, let's try this again. Okay. Um... Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and challenge this guy. Let's get a game started. Okay, 45 45. Rated, I play white. Okay, there's your challenge.
Okay, he says he wants in. I'll put him in. Challenge to a game. I play white. Okay. You got a challenge. Okay. So it's always a little difficult in the beginning when you give one of these, just getting everything coordinated, get the games off and running. Uh, so I'm going to play this a little differently than last time. Since he's adopting Chagorin style, uh, I know how to play against that. Okay, uh, near physicist said he would accept the challenge, but he hasn't uh, moved yet. I mean, he hasn't accepted yet, so we'll see if he accepts it. I assume he will. Okay, here's somebody who wants to be my friend. I accept all friends' requests. Okay. Uh, Queen C2. Three games is about my limit. Um, what I try to do with the whole purpose of these videos is to try to give some instructional value to the to the uh, player who I face. Now indirectly some pressure on d4 here. Uh, the threat is bishop takes f3 and uh, take on d4 with the knight. Okay, let's see. I already accepted that one guy. I accept the challenge. Why aren't you accepting it? Okay. Let's see. So I got to cover d4. Uh, we'll do that with c3. Okay. He's not accepting. He's offered a chat with me. Okay. So let's see. Okay, he didn't receive it. Let's see. Uh, where is this guy? Okay, let's try it again. Um, challenge to a game. 45, 45, I play white. He left the chat. Okay, so what he doesn't know is there's a video made of it. Um, Pacifico is disconnected. He lost. Huh. Oh well, his turn. Okay. Um, why do okay, is he... Very interesting. E5. Okay. I'm down to one game. So much for the simul. Uh, Pacifico, or not Pacifico, I want it. PC Philho. Disconnected and lost. Dang, dang shame. Okay. Uh, well, okay. So, what to do here? 
Is he threatening anything I should worry about? D4. Um, all right. Somebody's asking me in the chat, what's with my name? Okay, so I basically have one game here. Um, okay, I can take on e5. He takes back with the knight. I take the knight. He takes with the bishop. Then I play knight d2. And I'm ready to... Uh, okay, let's see. I'll just take his pawn. And then... Uh, Gain a tempo on the bishop on e5. Eventually. Um, okay. Unfortunately, we both forfeited each other. Okay, let's see this game. Now he's threatening to double my pawns. Of course, I can play rook e1, if that helps. The point, and then knight takes, e takes. I'm not winning his bishop. He blocks on e6. Okay, somebody else wants to chat with me. Except, okay. And now, knight d2. All right. I'll tell him about that I make a video later. Okay, so he's blocking his bishop's retreat back to g7. So I can play knight f3, and if bishop d6, I can play bishop h6, which stops him from castling kingside. But last game he castled queenside, so maybe he wants to do that again. Um, I can also win his pawn on d5, maybe. We'll see. Let's see. Do I want to do that? Um... Bishop g5 threatens. Bishop takes e f6, followed by queen takes d5. Did you get my challenge? Why isn't he getting my challenge? <coughs> I've sent it three times. Okay, so he wants to castle queenside, but um, I think he's just made a strategic error here. Okay, knight ta okay, I have a queen check. Knight takes e5, queen takes e5. Uh, queen checks. And if he plays, he can't play knight d7 because the bishop falls. I'm getting, getting some attacking chances here. I'm at least picking up the bishop pair. 
Okay. Um, dang. What to do here? Knight, knight takes, queen takes. Now I got so many good candidate moves. Uh, bishop f4 attacks his queen. And uh, queen a4 check forces bishop d7. And he's on my queen. And my queen can go to b3. I'm attacking b7. I'm attacking d5. He's not on e2 because uh, I'll have a pin. But I think it's proper to just pick up the bishop here. A lot of times, OK, the guy wants me to enable my challenges. Let me do that so I can get a game with this guy. OK, uh, settings, challenges. Um, play, alerts, where's the style, filter, where's, where's, where's my challenges, challenges, all challenges, I thought I had, I, I thought I had, uh, dang, I've had challenges on all along, <laughs> oh well, okay, let's see, save settings, okay, 45, 45, you play black. Okay, so let's take his bishop here. And uh, then I have to decide between bishop f4 and queen a4 check. Both are developing moves. Uh, I'm not worried at all about the hanging pawn on... Uh, on e2, it's going to run into some pins. Bishop f4, queen takes e2, queen takes e2, bishop take. Oh, don't interrupt. Okay, um, what was I saying? Uh, queen a4 check, you can play, you can play c6. Or what was I looking at? Bishop f4 immediately. Bishop f4, queen e7. And that hangs d5, but then he can pin me with castles long, so I don't want to take the pawn on d5 necessarily. Um, bishop f4, queen e7, queen a4 check. He brings his bishop back to d7. I'm going to put my queen on, uh, I'm just interrupting my connection again. Connection interrupting, reconnecting. Okay. Why is it doing this to me? Um. <coughs> Excuse me. Something's wrong. Something's wrong with my settings. Let's see. Challenges, friends, requests only. Let's see. What do you want here? All challenges. Uh, play. Challenges. Oh, here. Challenges from everyone. That's why. Please try again. <clears throat> okay, it's my move here. Bishop f4 develops. Queen should go to e7. You could put it on e6 trying to set up the battery. I'll just do the bishop. I like that move better first because he can't take on e2. Okay, now, let's check him. <coughs> let's see. What's wrong with my settings? 
Challenge from everyone, chat request, chat always. Alerts, play. Uh, play multiple games at a time. Oh, save settings. Maybe I didn't save it. <coughs> Try once more. May have forgot to save settings. Okay, so C6. Okay, now uh, I can play bishop g5, and I'm threatening uh, to play bishop takes f6, winning a piece. Uh, bishop g5, he's going to have to deal with his bishop. Then I can get a pin on that knight on f6. I think this might be decisive. Uh, I'm just going on instinct. instinct. Alerts. Where's... What's wrong with my settings? Uh, maybe if I challenge this guy again. Challenge to a game. Custom. I don't know why it's not working. Everyone else works. 45... 45 rated I play white create new game <coughs> okay he's just lost a piece much of a simul, more of a one-on-one -on -one affair. And the problem for black is he moved too quick. Okay, so he's uh, there's really nothing he can do. There we got it. That worked. Okay, we got another game. Okay. So we got to be friends. Okay, so... Okay, I gotta shut off challenges before I get any late ones. Challenges. Challenges from no one. Okay. D4. Okay, so. Just offer a queen trade that he can't afford to make. Okay. So we have a chance to go into Chagorin's defense. I know it. Do you? Bishop g4 is Chagorin's. I played a 1900 over the weekend, and uh, he played e6 here. Bishop g4, we have a Chagorin. Okay. I know this opening like the back of my hand from Black's point of view. Let's see what you know. Uh, I'm the first title player you've ever played. Well, I'm honored. Okay, so now uh, we go inquire the two bishops. Okay, let's see what D Zola is doing. King F7. Okay, just swap queens. And I'm gonna open up some lines. Gonna play play for E4. Okay, queen d5. Now he's on d4, so I have to stop and play e6, or e3 rather. Now main line's either e6 or e5. Okay, um, depends on the choice of uh, the 
choice he does he cede the two bishops or not bishop b4 does he play queen d6 that's a line too I haven't seen it in a long time but he played bishop b4 so this gets the two bishops okay now he needs to take okay it's been a while since I played this but I do know the system um, played this a lot back in the 1980s this variation of several times uh, at night GE7 let me think I know Queen B3 is a move Bishop G2 is a move um, Rook B1 offering a pawn is a move um, don't remember all the analysis I just remember the strategies you don't need to remember analysis uh, if you're playing a correspondence online game you can uh, uh, you can improve uh, your understanding of this variation I'm just gonna have to wing it here because I don't quite remember all the lines now Queen f3 is not a move or Queen b3 is not a move because uh, f3 hangs that's why you have to stop and guard e2 first and uh, I think the safe way to do it is bishop e2 and then sometimes black castles short and sometimes he castles long let's see what he does okay okay g5 that doesn't okay now it's just a matter of opening up lines and and uh, winning on attrition let's see e4 takes I take with a rook my bishop takes he goes to e8 with his rook and attacks my bishop and I just put it on d3 and he can't enter my position okay so e5 so now queen b3 is a potential move um, Okay, castle short. Okay. Now, for this this type of position, Black has gained some tempos. John Watson goes into an interesting discourse on this opening and talks about how often uh, the thing to do if you acquire the bishop pair is to open up the position, and uh, because the bishops will come out and. The last thing, and let me see, how does he say it? Uh, this is written back in 1980-81 in his excellent book on the Chagorin. Uh, he kind of goes against the grain. He says, okay, usually if, if you acquire the bishop pair, it comes at a loss of tempos. And right now, I'm two tempos behind. My queen is not developed, and, my, and I'm not castled. So I've gained something, but I've given something up, too. Uh, so... Objectively, what they say is that uh, you don't want to open up the position if you have the two knights. But in this case, I think what Watson's saying is you do. You want the position open up because you're ahead in development. So the objective for White is to uh, try to reach a position where uh, we we don't necessarily want to open things up. We want to uh, keep it closed and try to open up open it up later so since his king is castled kingside I think the rook b1 line is out we're not going to give up that pawn on a2 although I've I know I've snatched it as black uh, don't remember the games offhand it's been years since I looked at it so I got to think of candidate moves I think queen b3 is fine it puts the question to his queen and uh, attacks uh, his pawn on b7 and uh, yeah queen b3 is a decent move here normally uh, black often exchanges that e-pawn on d4 and he hasn't done it now 
if he plays queen d6, I don't necessarily want to snatch his b pawn. Okay, what's happening with d Zola? Okay, so now I take with the rook and offer rook trade. I could play rook d8. I double my rooks. He brings his rook to the seventh. I back my rook up to the second. He doubles rooks and not worried in the least. I'm a piece up. Okay, so let's see. I know if the position opens up at the right time, those bishops can uh, be kind of deadly. Okay, so he's seeking some outposts for his knights, one of which is c4. Uh, so I've got to basically keep his knight out of c4. How do I do that? Well, I'll show you. Uh, like one thing I can play is c4 myself. c4 attacks his queen and uncovers an attack on the knight. Oh wait, my, my queen's hanging. <laughs> okay, duh. My weakness, I can't see one movers right away. That's why I don't play blitz well. Okay, queen takes d5 and his knight takes, and I can play uh, c4. I'm attacking one knight and uncovering an attack on the other knight. What am I missing? But I want to trade queens in this position and, and try to reach an ending where I have the uh, the power of the two bishops versus the knights. So c4, uh, what can he do? Knight on a5, knight on a5 uh, is under attack, knight on d5 is under attack. Uh, what can he counterattack of mine? My bishops are covered. He can't threaten a fork. Well, he can threaten a fork with knight b4, but I just take it. Okay, so c4. And I have one apiece. No mercy. Okay, that was unfortunate, but unfortunately easy, but uh, objectively I want to try to teach something about the games and my thought process, but both players have made tactical mistakes and uh, dropped a piece. Okay, so let's see. Oh, he resigned. That game's over. Okay, so D Zola is over. All right. Now, where do I want the bishop? Um, Who do do? Put it on B three. Okay. So one game left. Okay, um, you can mess up my pawn structure a little bit, but I'm not too worried about that. Uh, I'm just basically a piece of head for a pawn. I have five pawns, black has six pawns. So uh, when those that are watching this video play a game, you're going to look at... Uh, uh, you're going to find positions where you're down material, and what do you do? Well, you have two choices, resign or fight. Okay, so he's going to fight. Okay, so what he's trying to do is is take squares away from my bishop, get it off that diagonal. Now, do I care about that? Yes and no. Okay. Um, what I need is to complete my development. Um, I think what's wise is just castle kingside. That way my rooks are connected. And if he plays a4, I can put the bishop on c2. And even though he gets knight c4 in, I'm not worried about that. My bishop can go to e3. And I can cover the weakness on e3 if he takes it. Yeah. Let's see, castle a4, bishop c2, knight c4. So on my bishop, bishop goes to e3. Now if he plays rook e8, um, I can play 
rook f e one and he can't afford to make trades then I'm going to follow up with bishop d3 and activate my rooks and bishops against his queenside pawn so castles gets my king out of the center and connects my rooks that's the most important objective so if he plays a4 I play bishop c2 okay black you're playing a little too quick Okay, you're gaining time on your clock. I'm gaining time on my clock too, but this is a position I, I an opening I knew. I hope you know it. Uh, if you look hard, you can find John Watson's book. I saw it in print. I mean, it's out of print, but I saw it at a used bookseller. Uh, it's an excellent book. There's a lot of books written on the Chagorin defense. Okay, played knight d5 to blockade. Blockade the isolated pawn. Well, uh, What I need to do here is coordinate my pieces and, you know, in effect, in effect win this game a piece ahead. So bishop e4 attacks his knight, opens up the c file for my rooks, then I got the b file too. Uh, his knight can't go forward. B4 and F4 are covered by my, by my bishop. And uh, if he plays knight F6, he's welcome to undouble my pawns. He might play C6. But then, like I say, I just uh, start working on his queenside pawns. Oh, there goes my connection. <laughs> he's doing that a lot. Okay, so let's see. Um, I try, like I say, I'll try to induce some weaknesses on his on his queenside pawns. When you're a piece ahead, you want to uh, coordinate everything and and use the extra material to win more material. You know, the simple thing is just trade off uh, and win on attrition. But while you've got the material, use it because uh, you can often win more and then win quicker. And when you're playing a stronger player which you will someday, and actually get a winning game against him because he's blundered, uh, he's going to keep fighting, and you've got you to put him down when he's down. Okay, uh, I've seen too many games come back. My simul number three, I achieved <laughs> lost games very quickly. I was playing too many games, and, and yet I kept fighting. Okay, so first step now is to try to, like I say, to try to create some weaknesses in his pawn structure. Uh, how can I do that? Uh, rook b1, if b6, an interesting idea is rook b5, and then if c6, I have bishop takes d5 because I'm uncovering an attack on his rook. Here, let me just point it with the mouse here. Rook b1. If b6, I have rook b5, and then c6 attacks my rook, but I play bishop takes d5. And now if he plays takes my rook, I take his rook, and I've achieved a lot of attrition, and uh, he's got some, uh, some weak pawns to deal with. So against rook b5, he's going to have to give some space with his knight. So this this is this is kind of an interesting variation here. Uh, he might need to play rook a b eight here, in which case a four could uh, become a little weak. So b b six on his part to save to secure his pawn walks into a pin. It it okay good good job he played rook b eight. Okay now. Uh, if I play rook b5, he can still play c6. And it's not as a, my idea isn't as effective as before. Okay, so how do we handle this? Okay, one way is to play rook fc1. 
that puts some pressure on c7. The idea being to take his knight on d5, he takes back with his rook, and my rook takes on, on c1 takes on c7. Yes, he wins my pawn on d4, but I'm not worried about that because I'm going to get another pawn on the 7th rank and, and uh, I mean, another rook on the 7th rank and it'll just say the lines out. Okay, rook fc1 if, okay, what's it? It's, it's a threat. He, he has to guard the threat. Rook fc1 plans bishop takes, rook takes, rook takes c7, rook takes d4. And I don't have to, to take this pawn right away uh, on b7. I can, uh, matter of fact, I shouldn't. I need to kick that rook first. Wait, let me, let me back this up. Bishop takes, rook takes, rook takes, rook takes. Bishop e3 kicks his rook. He can't go to the 7th. Uh, he can't threaten anything else. I'm going to win that pawn. So rook fc1, and, and I have a threat that he has to deal with. Okay. The th so if he plays b5, I can play bishop takes d5, rook takes d5, and rook takes c7. Once again, I have a rook on the 7th, and... Uh, I've gotten rid of one of my two bishops, but my uh, dark squared bishop will be activated because the pawn on d4, which is impeding its progress, will be lifted. Okay, so anyway, rook fc1. Uh, so let's see. Yeah, the Chagorn defense is a very interesting defense. Uh, okay, c6. So now I can play bishop takes d5. And if rook takes d5, I have bishop f4, attacks his rook, and wants to and drive it away from guarding the b7 pawn. That seems to work. Uh, you know, it's nice to keep two bishops on, but at some point, uh, you know, like I was saying, you use you use them to win more material. Right now, he has one pawn compensation compensation for the piece. Uh, his kingside pawn structure is sir, is uh, perfect. My pawn structure is shattered, but I'm a piece ahead, and all I need is. Uh, uh, just to remain the piece ahead, and I can uh, re-coordinate and win the ending. So I'll take a little time here and, and show the strategy. Okay, bishop takes, and combinations when you make exchanges are easy to see because the the replies are usually forced. After bishop takes d5, first question is, does he have his wishes hook? And the answer is no, he doesn't. There's no useful threat. So he must take with the pawn or the rook. Those are his candidate moves. So if pawn takes, bishop f4, and uh, he can play the rook to c8. And now I have to trade rooks first. Otherwise, I'm going to drop a rook. But then I, when I get my rook to b2, b7, he has a nuisance check. But before he can do any, any threatening of, of his own, actually, he doesn't have a nuisance check. My bishop is on f4 guarding it. But he has to watch the back rank before his rook can get active. That's if he takes with the pawn. If he takes with the rook, the same thing. Uh, I attack his rook, drive it away, and then win the pawn and win a pawn. Okay, so I may lose the pawn back on d4. Uh, bishop takes, rook takes, bishop f4. He moves his rook somewhere, say he doubles up. I take this pawn on b7, and he takes the pawn on on d4. Now he's attacking my rook and I just drop the bishop back to e3 and uh, I'm, I'm fine. Okay, let's see what he has. So here we can, now's the time to trade the bishop for the knight. I've done all I can with the uh, with the bishops. Bishop pair, so it's time to give it up and go into an, in, an ending. So, here here we are. Um,
chat? What, is, what happened to the chat? The chat here in this window. I don't see it. How do you get it back? I don't know. <laughs> okay, now bishop f4. Drives this rook away from b7. Okay, this was all anticipated. <coughs> and then I just bring the bishop back to e3. And I'm threatening the pawn on c7. He can guard it, but I can attack it again from behind. If rook uh, from d4 to d6, I have rook c7, and I believe that pawn's a goner. I don't know why the uh, chat, there it is. Okay, Rick B7, uh, okay. Okay, let's see, Rick checks. Now he's got to watch his back rank here. See, the back rank's a little weak. There, he covered that. Uh, okay, now, let's talk about the pawn on a2. Can he win it? If I play rook takes c6, he plays rook a1, and I play rook c2, and the answer is no, he can't. Okay, so... Uh, there's no need to dance with bishop a3, a c5, and a3 uh, to secure it. So just takes here. played rook a1 and rook c2 and the pawn is secure on a2 okay so king f8 okay case so king's not really going anywhere so for me to win this what I need to do is activate my king uh, my one weakness is the pawn on h. Well, I have more than one weakness. Hey, another friend request. I accept all friend requests. Okay. Um, let's see how to how to win this position. Okay. Is is king is cut off uh, from the queen side, and it's not going to help him anyways. Uh, the way to win this is to most economical way is to go win his uh, pawn on a4. Okay, if I win the pawn on a4, then I have a pass pawn. Now, he, it's, and he, he can't just see, leave his rook sitting on a1 the whole game to keep it from advancing. Uh, the moment it does advance, uh, let's see. The moment he does retreat it, I can advance it and threaten to stick my rook behind it. Now, one interesting idea, a tactical trick, is to play a3 here. Now, the purpose of a3 is that uh, he can't take my pawn on a3 because there's a fork. So by doing this, a th uh, I c uh, my king shelters all the weaknesses on the, the king side. There's no need to bring my king in just yet. a3... Uh, followed by bishop c5, followed by bishop b4, followed by, uh, I don't even have to play bishop b4. I can play rook c4 and win that pawn. So a3, 
and there's a tactical trick. He can't take the pawn on an a3. <coughs> okay, so anyway, this is where I'm at. Uh, video recorder. Okay, just chatting with this guy live. Okay, so now I put the bishop on c5 and and uh, the threat is to play rook c4 and rook takes a4. So king d7, rook c4, bishop b4. This kind of stops it. Of course, I can also put the rook on c3 and send the bishop down to f8 and perhaps win a pawn over there. He's got some weaknesses he has to cover. Okay, so anyway, wasn't the best simul I, I, I've had, but it's, it's a start. Okay, so now I'll just play rook c3, overprotect. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Let's not rush. Okay, if I play rook c3, he's, he's just going to play g6. And notice that he has a weakness. Um, if I play rook c4, he can't play king c6 because there's a discovery. Well, let's see. He, he can't afford to give me uh, trade rooks here. Let's see. Rook c4, king c6, bishop d4 check, king d5. Bishop takes a1, king takes c4, bishop takes g7, king b3, bishop f8, and followed by my king marching up and winning the pawn on h6. So rook c4 is the move. Okay, rook c4. These are simple things to see. The analysis that isn't that deep. You just have to understand a strategy. Okay, so now his king gets a little more active here, but he, he's not able to do anything with it. Okay, his, his best advantage is he's got his rook behind my pawn. Uh, I mean, not his advantage, his best compensation. Now I'm threatening to play bishop d4 and win a pawn, win another pawn. So... I can put the rook on a8, bring the bishop back to e3 where it's safe, and my pawn can run all the way to a7. And that's the threat. And then it's guarded on a7. I just move the rook and make a queen. But anyway, the uh, uh, the whole the whole strategy here is is uh, pretty simple. Okay, so this is not the best simul I gave. There wasn't as much instructional value. Uh, not that many people were of it. One no showed. Uh, I let somebody in that I wasn't going to let in because I wanted new people to play me, but there was an opening, so there you have it. Okay, so uh, um, there will be more simuls. More videos. I've got the best coaching site on chess.com. I stand by that statement. Because nobody gets... He resigned. Okay. Uh, so basically... Uh, let, me, uh, let me back the game up. Analyze this game with your opponent. With your opponent. Okay, I think you have to do this. Okay, now the owner of this board. Well, I'll analyze a little bit. Uh, I've, I'm familiar with this line. D takes C6 is a line. Uh, bishop takes C6, Knight C3, E6, uh, E4, Bishop B4. Is one line, uh, but getting going for the bishop pair is is good. 
Now the move I've been playing is e6 and then on knight c3. This was way recommended way back in Watson's book in 1981. And there's like one game example of it from the 60s. And I've played it as black and it holds up. Uh, I had some nice games with it. But anyway, uh, my own experience with this opening, I I had some trouble with the, against the two bishops. Maybe just my style of play. Although I tend to like knights a lot. Uh, but uh, without looking up the book, I don't remember all the variations. I just know there's a pile of them. And uh, usually, usually this pawn gets traded here. And then black has choices of castling uh, long or short. Uh, I'm just basically making this video uh, for the benefit of, of anyone looking at it. Black can castle long or short. But generally, black tra takes on this square first. Now, it does activate this bishop a little bit, but black's trying to get pot shots at the white center. He's trying to restrain this center from advancing. Uh, like, for instance, white can't play e4 here because d4 is going to hang. And for the moment, white can't play f4 because h1 is going to hang. So, but white can come out of this opening okay. Uh, queen b3, and as I mentioned, there's a rook, there's a sacrifice with rook b1, and I've snatched that pawn and paid the price. It's, it's tricky. Uh, anyway, backs up. Uh, I think he castled. Yeah, he castled, and then queen b3. But knight a5, unfortunately, is the losing move, it seems. What, what can black do? Uh, well, black can gambit this pawn. Okay, queen d6. Uh, and I'm not sure I can get away with taking it. Uh, you know, black's got an awful lot of activity here for just a small pawn. Uh, this kind of puts a cramp in, in the uh, white position. He can't castle. Uh, you know, it gets it's, it's extremely tactical here. You know, invite the bishop to come back and undevelop. Then we'll just chase the queen out. Okay, you know, uh, I, I probably wouldn't grab that pawn on, on b7. I think it's, it's poisonous. Black's way ahead in development, and uh, white hasn't, hasn't completed his, so I, I don't think it's a good idea to take that pawn on b7. So what can white do? If white takes on e5, he's, he's gotten rid of his uh, compact uh, pawn center, it's better to wait and see if black will take here. So what does white do? Well, he needs to develop. Uh, I think white white can't even get away with just playing king f1, get the king off out, out of the center. But castling can't be all that bad. And can black generate anything against it? Maybe king h1 with the idea of f5 and the idea of rook up. Uh, uh, like I say, this pawn's poisoned. I don't think I can afford to take it. So, the the two bishops still are they're not useful for white. But the two the two knights they don't have blockading squares yet. Uh, objectively, Black would like to get a pawn on a6 and a pawn on b5, so that this knight can get into c4, and then get this knight into d5. That's wonderful, wonderful white square blockade. Uh, there's like I say, the Watson book has a bunch of diagrams in the beginning of it that show the various types of positions that Black strives for in the Chikorin defense. There's a book in print by Angus uh, Dunnington that does the same thing, and he sh he shows uh, various diagrams that uh, of the positions Black will strive for, and uh, and uh, very similar to what Watson offers. So it, it's it's a fascinating defense. It's not it's not a bad defense. Uh, they frowned on it back in Chagorin's days because it blocked a sea pawn, and a lot of people have revived it. You know, John Watson's book did a lot, written circa 1980, did a lot to get it going, and then Grandmaster Morozovich adopted it and played quite a bit, and it, and it got a revival. And it, it's good for an even game for Black, and 
it's it's a good surprise weapon. Uh, it's something that white needs to be prepared for. And if white's not carefully prepared, uh, black will equalize much easier than he would with uh, playing a main line, say, King's Indian, Gruenfeld, Queen's Indian, Queen's Gambit declined or accepted. Uh, another nice thing about the opening, just look at this position here. Uh, the black pawn structure, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's perfect. The wing pawns are perfect. They've not moved. There's no weaknesses. And this is one neat thing. This is similar to the Nemesevich defense, which I also play. Uh, black often finds himself with those pawns sitting there, particularly in the exchange variation. Uh, another opening that does this is similar to the center counter. So the Chagorin, the center counter, the Nimzovich are all kind of related in a little bit, structural-wise. If you can play one well, you can play the other two. And uh, I adopted this opening back in 1986 when I entered ICCF play because I wanted a defense that my opponents wouldn't know well. I wanted to get out of mainline theory and create my own. So here, he's, he's moving the pieces now. I'm not. Let's see what he has to say or show. Okay, so uh, I'll miss the type. As I'll just let you know, as, as my video points out, as my video points out, I know this opening well from Black's side. I played it in ICCF correspondence chess and have it down circa 1996 to 1999. Whoops, 1986. Let's see. Let get rid of this little window. He can't see this. Close that. There it is. I have another one open. 1986. I want to show. I can't type with the darn. Anyway, I'm, it's hard for me to, <laughs> it's a game is spelled can't, it says T-Y-E-P, -T can't, can't. He knows what I mean. Okay, so, uh, I'm not sure if I can say much more in this, in this video that's beyond the scope of of this opening theory. I don't remember all the lines, I just know the theory. Uh, Bishop e2, I'm pretty sure is a move. But, oh, there goes my connection. It's doing this a lot. Okay, well, hopefully it's going to stay. Anyway, I'm going to shut the video off. Anyway, closing video and we'll get it uploaded and send you link. Then we can talk. Let's see. Let's chat here a moment. Okay. Video shut off.